So um, for belt tension, we'll go for guided tests. And it's a system test and it's belt tension, natural frequency. And we'll load the settings file. Actually, no, let's just have a look at the guided test. So there you have how to perform the test, where to strum. Say so MVH microphone connected to channel A. And then you'll notice the scope view is divided into the time domain view and the frequency domain here. And this measurement is going to measure the frequency at peak, so after strumming the belt. Minimise that. Now, I wanted to change a few things here, um, just purely so we've got a um, neat view. So on the left is the time domain, on the right is the frequency domain. Let me just pull that out of the way. And I want to change this uh, frequency at peak to large. But what I also want to do is set some limits. Now, I don't know what those limits are at the moment. So what we'll do now is just run the scope. Uh, and it's waiting for a trigger. So let me strum the belt. Okay, so frequency at peak was 149 kilohertz, sorry, hertz. We can prove that just by pulling that ruler out, placing that over there. Right, so let's do that again. So our MVH microphone is located there. Uh, it's aimed at the belt. We've gone for that run that you see right there from the alternator pulley down to the AC pulley. And I'm gonna reach down there now and strum the belt and just watch the peak of scope display. As you see, every strum is the same frequency. All right, but what I wanted to do now was add some limits. So I'm not sure what the spec is. This is a self-tension belt, so I'll accept at the moment that that is correct. Um, we'll put a lower limit um, sorry, an upper limit of something like um, 200 hertz and a lower limit of, let's say, 110. Okay, so there's quite a broad spectrum there where um, our value will be displayed here in the colour black because that is good. So let's carry on testing. So once again... We strum the belt. Notice we had an error there because the microphone had picked up probably me just shuffling around. Uh, all I'm doing is strumming the belt. But if I do a, um, maybe if I just tap something, I'm clicking my fingers there. You see it's come up 28 because that is way outside the limits we set. So I'm just clicking my fingers by the microphone. Yeah, it doesn't like that at all. What we can now do is add something um, like actions, which I really like this feature. So we want to add an action, which I'm looking for and I can't see it. Ah, there it is, I'm so sorry. So action, and we want to change the event. So we want to put an action on measurement limit failure. So every time the measurement limit fails, remember those values that we put in, I think it was 110 and 200, we'll add an action and we just want to play a sound. We'll choose the sound, we'll just go for beep and we'll make sure volume is good on our system. So we're running now. Uh, once again, we'll strum the belt. Yep. And so that was way out for some reason. In fact, the initial trigger, it was triggered by something else because the um, data after the trigger, the second larger pulse there is the correct strum. Let's try again. Pass. Pass. 
pass. Very good. Now let me do a strum that's going to be the wrong or wrong data. <laughs> I'm strumming the belt, but of course, let me see if I can tap something. There we are. That's me now tapping the alternator. Yeah, and that's wrong. Okay, and then once more strumming the belt. Correct. So as you can see, um, adding actions to measurement limits gives you a hands-free option and it works beautifully well with this belt tensioning procedure.